Amidst a shattered city beneath a blood-red moon, destruction reigns as flames devour the buildings. Our protagonist, battered and wounded, stands beneath the ominous sky, a stark reminder of the fierce battle that has just unfolded. Amid the crumbling ruins, a towering beast emerges, its colossal form shattering buildings as it rises. The creature lets out a terrifying roar, its glowing eyes locked on the helpless crowd below. A horde of masked enemies charges forward, while terrified civilians flee, screaming for help. On a nearby rooftop, the protagonist, injured and exhausted, faces two new challengers. One of them kicks him, sending him to the ground. Already severely wounded, the protagonist is drenched in a strange green liquid as he lies helpless. His betrayers, standing above him, mock him with cruel smiles, casually declaring they'll see him in the next life while stripping him of all his belongings. One holds up a mysterious glowing item, claiming it greedily. With a pained expression, the protagonist mutters a name, Zio Yun, as his vision fades. A fearsome beast materializes above the antagonist, fueled by the stolen power, and the air crackles with energy. The villain, grinning wickedly, reveals that Zio Yun's sacrifice was essential for this dark ritual, leaving the protagonist in shocked disbelief. As the colossal beast Jun, blessed with the power of the gods, roars into battle, hope briefly flickers among the survivors. However, the villain unleashes devastating flames upon the protagonist, laughing maniacally as the fire threatens to consume everything in its path. The two titanic forces collide in a cataclysmic clash, Jun's chains glowing red as they strike the monstrous opponent. Shockwaves ripple through the crumbling city, the ground trembling beneath their power. In a massive explosion, the city is engulfed in flames, and the fallen protagonist is consumed. In his final moments, as the fire devours him, he vows that if given another chance, he would never make the same mistakes again. With fierce resolve, the protagonist's eyes blaze with fire as he refuses to let go, declaring a new beginning. Flames swirl around him, and his heart beats once more, signaling a powerful resurgence. The protagonist awakens with a start, his eyes still reflecting the fire's power. But he finds himself in an unfamiliar room, confused and shaken. He notices that his body is completely healed, with no visible wounds or traces of fire, leaving him questioning the reality of his situation. Shocked by recent events, he wonders if the mysterious voice he heard was real. Glancing at his phone, he realizes that he's been sent back in time, three days before the apocalypse begins. He stares into the mirror, questioning if everything has truly reset. As he examines his reflection, he notices his right eye glowing with a pale gold hue, realizing it may be connected to the fire that consumed him before his death. Stepping out into the bright daylight, his resolve firm, the protagonist prepares for what lies ahead. Gazing at the bustling streets, he reflects on how everything around him will be destroyed in just three days. He knows the impending apocalypse will turn humans into zombies and bring forth strange gods. As he walks, his mind returns to the sting of betrayal by his girlfriend, Ruolan, and his best friend, Shijun, who abandoned him without hesitation. When his phone rings and Ruolan's name appears, the protagonist smirks, answering the call with calm confidence. He recalls how he used to anxiously appease her whenever she threatened to break up, but this time, everything feels different. With a calm but firm tone, he simply says, Sure, before dropping the bombshell that he wants to break up. Smiling confidently, he tells Ruolan he's done serving her and bids her farewell without a second thought. With a newfound sense of peace, the protagonist slides his phone into his pocket and strides confidently through the busy streets. Determined, he reminds himself to handle the important business before anything else. At Ruolan's home, she angrily slams her phone down, furious that the protagonist hung up on her and blocked her number. As she vents to her lover, she briefly wonders if her betrayal has been discovered, but quickly dismisses the thought, convinced the protagonist is too oblivious to figure it out. Her lover tries to calm her, 
mentioning that his father has asked him to collect some powerful family heirlooms, hinting that something big is on the horizon. As they discuss the heirlooms, Ruolan reveals that one of the family tokens is with Xia Yan's sister, and she plans to manipulate Xia Yan to retrieve it when the time is right. Her lover agrees with the plan, dismissing any further concerns as they relax together. Meanwhile, the family token, an ancient artifact, remains in their possession, radiating a mysterious energy. Yan wonders why her brother suddenly made the urgent trip to see her, noting the distance he traveled by taxi. As she looks into his eyes, she notices something strange, but Xia Yan reassures her, asking if she trusts him while hiding the truth behind his glowing eye. Yun smiles brightly and tells her brother that she trusts him completely, reminding him of the strong bond they've always shared and how they've relied on each other for support. She believes everything he does is for her benefit. Xia Yan instructs her to go to school, pack her belongings, and return home immediately. She agrees without hesitation. As Yun heads off, she casually mentions that she'll see her brother in two hours, expecting him not to ask why. Turning back with a bright smile, she reassures him once again, Brother, I trust you. As Yun walks away, Xia Yan resolves to ensure her survival this time, vowing to protect her at all costs. Clenching the ancient family token in his hand, he braces for the challenges ahead, determined to change their fate. Examining the mysterious token, Xia Yan wonders if something about it has changed. His glowing eyes reflect the power within, and he senses a new potential stirring inside. Suddenly, Xia Yan is engulfed by a powerful surge of energy as the token in his hand ignites with flames. The token reveals its true nature, inscribed with the words, The Six Great Hells, radiating immense power and leaving Xia Yan stunned. In an instant, Xia Yan is pulled into a vortex of energy, spiraling uncontrollably as he is transported to an unknown, ominous realm. Dark chains and towering structures fill the landscape, signaling the terrifying power of the sixth great hell he has now entered. As Xia Yan is hurled through the strange dimension, he realizes with shock that the realm is filled with terrifying monsters and demons. The towering structure before him, teeming with dark creatures, confirms Jia Yan's worst fears as he descends deeper into the abyss. As he confronts the terrifying monsters, their red eyes glow menacingly as they charge at him. Overwhelmed by the horrific sights, he can't help but feel fear, realizing just how real and dangerous this hellish dimension truly is. A fierce storm of purple lightning rages above, striking down the monstrous foes with immense power. The sky crackles with energy, and a figure stands before an ancient structure, bathed in the ominous glow of the storm and surrounded by chains of energy. Xia Yan is shocked to see that the powerful lightning is actually suppressing the monsters within the tower. Amid the chaos, a sinister figure emerges taunting him with a chilling smile, mocking his fear as the storm continues to rage. Stunned, Xia Yan demands to know who she is. She reveals herself as Su Daji, the warden of Hell's prison, radiating an aura of immense power and authority. Thousands of years ago, she explains, the immortal emperor and the twelve immortals united to create the demon-suppressing tower. Now known as the Sixth Great Hell, the tower contains unimaginable power and chaos. For centuries, it has imprisoned countless ferocious beasts and sinful gods for their heinous crimes. Trapped within the Sixth Great Hell, these beings are tormented by soul-burning heavenly lightning, day and night, with no hope of escape from their suffering. Su Daji explains that the pardon token in the protagonist's hand is the only key that can unlock the prison doors. She offers to guide him inside, suggesting they check on the prisoners together while she gives him a detailed report on the state of the prison. Xia Yan confidently agrees, gripping the token tightly as he prepares to enter. Together, he and Su Daji step into the glowing purple portal, ready to confront the horrors within. 
Upon entering the prison realm, Xia Yan is immediately engulfed by beams of intense purple and blue energy. As the chaotic forces spiral around them, Su Daji warns him to be cautious, signaling the danger ahead. Tapping into his latent power, Xia Yan's eye begins to glow with fiery energy. Sparks of golden and purple light swirl around him, and Su Daji watches in awe, impressed by the strength he's now displaying. Su Daji reveals that the flame in Xia Yan's eye is the nether fire seed, the very force that allowed him to restart his life after death in the underworld. She explains that their bond, along with the Xia family's deep connection to the six great hells, helped her awaken his power when his despair ignited the fire seed at the moment of his death. Xia Yan realizes that his rebirth has a purpose, to harness his newly awakened powers in the face of the coming apocalypse. With newfound determination, he vows that this time, everything will be different as he prepares to face the challenges ahead. With renewed confidence, Xia Yan commands Su Daji to lead the way through the tower. As they descend, she explains that the six great hells are divided into layers, each more dangerous than the last, requiring increasingly stronger soul power to confront the imprisoned creatures within. Xia Yan is shocked when he recognizes the imprisoned beast before him. It's the same creature Su Jin used in his previous life. The sight stirs memories of past battles, reigniting his resolve for the trials to come. The beast roars ferociously, its red eyes glowing as it unleashes a terrifying scream toward Xia Yan. Wide-eyed, he braces himself, realizing the true power of the creature standing before him. But then, to his surprise, the enormous bear-like creature humorously greets him, recognizing him as the new warden and showering him with compliments. Another figure teases the bear for groveling at the warden's feet, adding a light-hearted moment to the tense atmosphere. The bear humorously attempts to lick Xia Yan, but is promptly told to get lost. Xia Yan reflects on how even thousand-year-old demon kings behave like dogs after being imprisoned for long enough. Just then, a powerful creature questions the warden's authority, dismissing his power as reliant on a mere token and daring the lightning to strike again. As Xia Yan moves forward, he fully realizes the magnitude of the prison, holding legendary creatures like Su Daji and the Black Bear Demon. He gazes at the ominous creature before him, recognizing its towering presence. A sudden realization strikes him. Could this beast be someone he once knew? Or a legendary figure from the past? As Xia Yan approaches, he immediately recognizes Lei Jenzi with a single glance. Su Daji, impressed by Xia Yan's sharp instincts and his ability to effortlessly identify such a powerful entity, praises him. Xia Yan learns about the hierarchy of monsters in the tower, ranging from soldiers to sages and grasps the levels of power he will have to face. Staring up at the ominous structure of the tower, he acknowledges the formidable challenges that lie ahead, understanding that he must grow stronger to overcome the obstacles within. Shayan contemplates the immense power of the general-level beasts on the lower floors, which leaves him wondering about the terror that must be imprisoned on the higher levels. With determination, he vows to conquer them all and become the strongest force in the coming apocalypse. Su Daji then informs Xia Yan that, with his current soul power, this is the farthest he can go within the prison for now. As he exits, resolved to prepare for the apocalypse, he knows he must gather more soul power and abilities. His true hunt will begin in three days, when the gods descend upon the world. And that's the end of the video. See you in the next chapter.